Hello class, in the last video, we looked at the external structures of the eye, the eyelids, eyebrows, things of this nature there. With this one, we're looking at the structure of the eyeball. Okay, There are actually three layers of the eyeball, three layers of the eyeball. The outer fibrous layer, a middle vascular layer, and an inner layer, which is where the retina would be. You also have two fluid-filled cavities in the eye that help maintain shape. They're called the humors. We have the aqueous humor, which is a more watery fluid, and a vitreous humor, which is more of a jelly-like fluid. So when we look at the eye, this is basically what we're looking at. This fibrous layer, which is this outermost layer, the outermost layer, would contain, would, would contain the sclera, which is the whitest portion of the eye, which is continuous with the cornea, which is a clear, transparent area of the eye in the front. The middle layer is the vascular layer, and that vascular layer would include the choroid, which is a dark area that assists in keeping light from, from reflecting out in the eye. The ciliary body, which contains ciliary muscles, dilation of various areas as far as pu pulling on the lens and also assisting with uh, making the aqueous humor. And the iris itself, which is the color part of the eye. And then the innermost area, here is where the retina would be. And so you have a pigmented layer, and then you have the actual neural layer where the retina, where we would actually get our neural ability to, to see. Okay. So essentially, three layers of that eye, three layers of the eye, as you can see here, that we'll be talking about of the eyeball. All right. Here is a picture here to show a photograph of the human eye here okay, that you can look at. All right, so we're going to start first with the fibrous layer, which I mentioned. And with the fibrous layer, you have the sclera, which is the whitish portion of the eye. It's an opaque, opaque posterior region. It's white, protects and shapes the eyeball, anchors the extrinsic eye muscles. Remember, the superior oblique uh, and uh, lateral rectus, medial rectus, those there. And it's continuous with the dura mater of the, of the brain posteriorly. Here is a look at the microscopic appearance of the, of the sclera, that whitish area, episcleral tissue, scleral proper, and so forth. So this just shows a microhistiologic look at the sclera, but that's that whitest portion of the eye that the eye muscles attach to and so forth. That's at the back. Then we go to that, that outermost layer, steel fibrous layer. You go to the cornea. The cornea is a transparent anterior one sixth of the fibrous layer. And that cornea bends light as it enters the eye. Okay. It has sodium pumps. So basically, I'm going to go here. Here's the cornea. It's an epithelial layer on the outside and an epithelial layer on the inside. Okay. And this, this epithelial layer on the outside, as you can see, is a squamous layer, kind of a stratified squamous layer. Then you have this stroma, but all of this is very clear. And then you have the inside. Now, <clears throat> This inside area, because you don't want the, the cornea to swell up and, and get fluid, because you're going to see there's aqueous humor there, it has an active transport pump, sodium active transport pumps that pump the water out so it does not infiltrate into the cornea, swell it up, because then you would have a distortion of vision. You have numerous pain receptors on the cornea, so that if anything touches the cornea, you will blink. You will tear up things of this nature there. It has no blood vessels, obviously, 
So it's beyond the control of the immune system. No blood vessels, the immune. So basically, you can transplant the cornea from anyone. You don't have to go through matching for that because there's nothing to fight it with a corneal transplant. Okay. When you look at the cornea, uh, you can get corneal tears, abrasion, things of this nature here. What the, what the physician would do would be to come in and put a fluorescein dye, and that fluorescein dye would unveil many things that would be you would see in the cornea, like, such as tears, abrasions, and so forth, corneal abrasions, ulcers, things of this nature there. So the cornea, because you want it to be perfectly trans, transparent and have no defects within it. Okay. So now we go to the next layer here. That's the cornea. The vascular layer. Okay. The vascular layer, there are three portions of this vascular layer. Let me go back here. The vascular layer, which is, the, which is the, the middle layer, has three portions to it. It has the choroid, it has the ciliary body, and it has the iris. Okay? The choroid region, which is the posterior region, of, and, this, and this, this middle layer is also called the uvea. So this posterior region portion of the uvea supplies blood to all layers, because remember it's the vascular layer, to all layers of the eyeball. It has a brown pigment produced by melanin that prevents the scattering of light. So when light comes in, you don't want the back of the eye to be like a mirror, which would reflect the light, and then you would be unable to see. Okay? Then you have the ciliary body. The ciliary body is a ring of tissue. And what it is, it's really a lot of smooth muscle. And what it does is to pull on, let me go here. What it does is it has some zonular fibers, suspensory ligaments, ciliary zonules that pull on the lens. Okay, the lens changes shape to accommodate distant vision and near vision, to change the shape. And what happens is, as we get into the physiology of vision, is that these fibers are attached to the lens and they're attached to the smooth muscle of the within the ciliary body. Also, at the inner side here of the ciliary body are the ciliary processes and what these do, which we'll talk about in a moment, is to secrete the aqueous humor, the fluid, that will then assist in keeping the shape of the of the eye, of the lens, shall I say. Well, so, not so much the lens, the cornea and the anterior chamber, or uh, anterior region of here, of the eye. And also to change the shape of this lens. Then we have the iris. The iris is that colored part of the eye. It can dilate, open up and close down, dilate, constrict to, to allow light through the pupil. So what will happen, you have a, let me just show you here. You have two types of muscle there. A circular muscle, if they constrict, the pupil, the, the pupil will constrict. Then you have radial muscles out here, and when they act, they will open pull back on this iris so you can bring most. So in other words, these muscles here dilate and the circular muscles constrict. The dilation muscles are operated by the sympathetic nervous system. So when you get scared of whatever, your, eye, your pupils get big. And the parasympathetic, the rest and recluse, close it down and so forth. So this is what we're looking at in that iris, the colored part of the eye. Okay. So I come here then and I say, what is eye color due to? Eye color is due to the color of the iris. Eye color typically ranges between a brown, a hazel, a green, gray, blue. Occasionally the color of iris is due to a lack of pigmentation because the pig, 
which is the pinkish white that you would see in the albino and so forth. Now, what actually causes the, uh, the activity there, and that's this here, that melanin, now there, there's a eumelanin, which is a dark brown, and a pheomelanin. So the combination of those two, combined with other factors, is what gives the coloration of the eye. So there's no blue melanin. The point is, is that the coloration is due to variations within the melanin, and it's also very complex because it consists of the texture, the pigmentation, the fibrous tissue, the blood vessels within this iris, and you know, with uh, within the iris stroma and so forth. Okay. So I go back again because I did want to show you. I'm gonna go back here this ciliary body. So here, what you will see is here are those zonal fibers right there. Now right here is the ciliary process, which is going to secrete, as we'll talk about later, the aqueous humor. But here are these ciliary, these, these, uh, the ciliary body, these zonal fibers that some could call suspensory ligands, zonal fibers, Ciliary zone that attaches to the lens, and if they if this if the if the muscle here pulls on it, the lens will get flatter, which will allow you to see distance. And when they when it relaxes, it gets thicker to allow light to bend to see close up. But we'll talk about that in the physiology section. But I want to show you how this is working here on this lens. Okay. <clears throat> here again is a picture of the various eye colors that you can see here. And again, I, it's all due to many variations that you have, but, but all due to a melanin. So there's no blue or green color. Everything has to do with variations in how the melanin appears and so forth like that. So that's what you're looking at when it comes to that, to the, to the particular eye color. And so we'll go here then. So coloration of the eye. Now we're going to the inner layer. The inner layer, which is basically the the retina. So we have the in, the inner area now, and it it appears it it doing development. In the prosencephalon, it comes as an outpocketing. Okay. Remember, we had a prosencephalon uh, and then a mesencephalon and rhombencephalon. Okay. And then the prosencephalon develops into two the telencephalon and diencephalon. I won't get into that, but it's outpocketing of the brain. So with the retina, you have an outer pigmented layer. You have an outer pigmented layer, and that's a single layer lining. So let's look here. And here's that's what we're looking at, that retina right there. Okay. And actually, I'm going to end this and start on the retina on the next one.